وبآله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاصب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكلامه الكريم وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم ربنا أنزل علينا مائدة من السماء تقول لنا عيدا لأولنا وآخرنا وآية منك وارزقنا وأنت خير الرازقين آمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم سلوا على محمد وآل محمد We are blessed with festivals Last Thursday we had the Christmas Eve in fact the Christmas day and we also prayed at awwal waqt today is new year new year day last night was eid al zahra it's so these all are festivals and these are happy occasions indeed and soon on the 14th night of rabiul awwal it is the day where or it is the day where yazid lanatullah alay was thrown to the pits of the fire of hell for the 14th of rabiul awwal Then three days further down the line, inshallah, which will be the 17th of Rabiul Awal, we shall be celebrating the birth anniversary of two Sadiq, Sadiqain. Yeah. And from 12th of Rabiul Awal, in fact, till 17th of Rabiul Awal, Imam Khomeini, rahimahullah, has given this whole week as Haftai Wahdat, which means the week of unity. All the Muslims should celebrate the birth anniversary of the Holy Prophet of Islam, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So when we have, we are surrounded with ayad, with eids, on the on these festivals, on these great days, what are we supposed to do? Does it mean that if we have got eids, so many eids, shall we cross our limitations? Shall we be so happy that we forget Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because of these eids? Because many a times when you see eids, people forget Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They indulge themselves and involve themselves in haram. Yeah, because they are free. They think that this is Eid. But what are we supposed to do in Eid? Now, Quran has mentioned the word Eid. The verse which I recited right now, it is where it is the dua of Nabi Isa alayhi salam when he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, O oh Allah, you send to us ma'idah, food, so that it should become Eid for us. Taqoonu lana Eidan. Eid. Eid means to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes from the word awd, when a person goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can we go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? By remembering Him, by remembering His blessings, by remembering the bounties which, we, which He has bestowed on us. Now our sixth holy imam says that when you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if you want to remember His bounties, Do no, sixth Imam says, La tadumun na'ma illa bithalaf. Imam Sadiq says, that the na'ma will, will never stay firm and steady until if you observe these three things. La tadumun na'ma illa bithalaf. Now let us see what are those three things. If we want that this na'ma, we, we are blessed with so many bounties, with so many blessings. Sometimes there was a person known as Abu Hashim al Ja'afari. He went to a 10th holy imam and he said, he started complaining about his financial situation. Imam Hadi told him that, why are you complaining about your financial situation? Allah has bestowed on you so many blessings. And he said, what kind of blessings has Allah given to me? Imam Hadi says, the first name which Allah has given you is Iman. Because it is going to act as a barrier for you to go to the fire of hell. So we have got, then Imam Hadi says, health, it's also a name. Then Imam Hadi alayhi salam says, peace, which we are blessed also in this country, we are blessed with peace. You tell me, if there was no peace, would we be able to come here and recite Dua Kumel and hold this majlis here, pray namaz-e-jama'ah? Was it possible 
peace itself is a great ni'mah. Now, if we want this, all this ni'mah, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with, awlaad, these are ni'mah. Uh, peace, we have got tranquility. Iman is a greatest ni'mah. We want it to stay firm and steadfast. What shall we do? Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, the first thing is, ma'arifatullah la yalzimuha. Ma'arifatullah, ma'arifatullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, you need to have ma'arifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to have that state of understanding that this ni'mah has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person shouldn't become arrogant uh, like Karun who say that this, all this, whatever I have got, it is from myself, it is from my ilm. Uh, a person should have married for the state of understanding that it has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only from Allah. Like Sulaiman alayhi salam said, Hatha min fadli rabbi. Sulaiman said, whatever I am given by, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first thing. The second thing, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, Adaw shukriha. Which means that a person needs to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adaw shukriha. A person says that I was at the presence of Imam Kazim alayhi salam. All of a sudden, I saw that Imam Sadiq, we were all together with Imam Kazim alayhi salam, going somewhere. We, were mount, we, we had mounted on our horses. We were heading somewhere. But all of a sudden, Imam Kazim alayhi salam said, hold on. He got down from his horse. He came to the ground and he prostrated towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I said to Imam Kazim, what happened all of a sudden? Imam Kazim says to Hisham, the person's name was Hisham. He was the companion of Imam Kazim alayhi salam. Imam says to Hisham that, oh Hisham, suddenly I remembered a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thought that let me thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a ni'mah which he has blessed me with. This is, this is Imam Kazim alayhi salam. And the third thing Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, what abu fiha? So the first thing is you need to have ma'rif of Allah. The second thing, be grateful towards him. He has given you this ni'mah. The third thing, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, strive to maintain that ni'mah. What abu fiha? Whatever ni'mah you have, whatever, be it children, iman, you strive and struggle to maintain it. What abu fiha? Maintain it. Try to maintain it. Now, many a times, we spoil our iman, don't we? Uh, we commit sins. We think that it is, these are the, day, the happy occasions. Uh, so let us commit sins. Because we are in a happy occasion now. This is what we think. Yeah, but what does Quran says? Quran says in Surah Hadid, chapter 57, verse number 23. See, what does Quran say? And Imam Ali Islam says in Najib al that if you want to know who is a Zahid person, a Zohud person, a simple person, then all simplicity is defined in these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ali Islam says in Najib al which means, and you may not be grieved, whatever escapes you. If you are in a calamity, Imam Ali alayhi salam says, do not cry much. Do, and you may not be grieved. Whatever escapes you. لِكَيْ لَا تَعَسَوْ وَلَا مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا أَتَاكُمْ And do not, be, oh, do not be exultant. Do not be overjoyed in happy occasions. وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا أَتَاكُمْ For whatever we have given you. Whatever name we have given you, do not be overjoyed. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ كُلَّ مُخْتَالٍ فَخُورٍ because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love any arrogant boaster. Because when you are overjoyed, you'll, be, you'll start to boast. You'll start to be arrogant. You'll start to be proud. Allah does not love those who are proud. Wallahu la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalin fakhur. Sometimes you see, when we even commit sins, or when we do not perform wajibat, what happens is that we are going one step down from perfection. One step down. Say, we do not perform wajibat. We have done our namaz sub kaza. We are going down from perfection. We are not reaching that kamal. Yeah? And even if we commit sins, we do not perform wajibat, we are going down from kamal, from perfection. We even, and, and if we commit sins, we are down from perfection. Sometimes we utter a word. Imam Ali salam says about Nama, he says, Rubba kalimatin jalabat nikma wa salabat nikma. Imam Ali Islam says, sometimes only a word, only a word, it attracts disaster and it snatches away ni'mah. Only a word, Imam Ali Islam says, Rubba kalimatin. 
Jalabat Nikma was Salabat Ni'ma. It is said that these two personalities, Sayyid Murtaza and Sayyid Razi, uh, they were giving lessons in, in, in Iraq. And these two personalities, they are buried in Karbala. We all know that they have compiled Nehaju Balagha. And Abu Ali Ma'arri, he came to know that Sayyid Murtaza is giving lessons. And he wanted to learn, and they were very interesting lessons. So Abu Ali Ma'arri wanted to go forward, but he was blind. He could not see. So he started holding the shoulders of the tulab who was sitting there in Najaf. He wanted, he was holding the shoulder so that he should move forward. While he was holding the shoulder, and one of tulab, imagine he was Talib Ail, one of somebody taking notes, but it just came out from his mouth. He says, oh, Kalb, sit down. Why are you disturbing us? It's very interesting. He wants to sit there for majlis or for lectures or for lessons, but he's saying to another fellow uh, that, oh, Kalb, Kalb means a dog. Sit down. Only a word. But in, as far as spirituality is concerned, spiritually he has moved down from perfection. Why? Because he used that word. He used abusive word. Abasa wa tawalla anja ahul ama wa ma yudrika la allahu yazakka. Quran says. Imagine only one action in the time of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah was with Quraysh Makkah, Ashraf Makkah, uh, and he was busy preaching. All of a sudden, Abdullah bin Maktoum came, who was blind. And those, the elders of Quraysh, uh, they saw he was a blind person calling Muhammad, Muhammad. He could not see he was blind. And one person started frowning. Oh, why did he come now? Five verses of Quran revealed of Surah Abasa. Abasa means to frown. A person frowned, he made a face, Verses of Quran revealed, five akhlaqi verses of Quran revealed. Abbas Awatawalla, you are frowning and turning your back. Anja ahul aama, because a blind man entered in. Wama yudri kala Allahu yazakka. And what do you know? Perhaps he has purified himself. You are thinking that you are better than him. Perhaps he is better than you. Because maybe he has purified himself. Ekdurud beje Muhammad or Ali Muhammad par. So, insan bhot khyal kare in holidays mein, bank holidays mein, ayad mein. Insan sochta hai ke jab eid aati hai, to ab unko chhoot mil gai. Gunaah kar sakta hai, aisa insan sochta hai. Nahi, eid ke din mein insan ne'amat ko yaad kare. Insan mawaddat ahlabayt se bhot qareeb ho. Insan mot ko yaad kare. Zabaan ka khyal rakhe. Mot ko bhi yaad kare. Kisi ne masoom se kaha ki kaha hum har jaga mot ko yaad kare. Amir al-Mumini ne farmaya, afzal al-zikr, zikr al-mawt. Wa afzal al-ibadah, zikr al-mawt. Sab se afzal zikr, zikr al-mawt hai. Or sab se afzal ibadat, zikr al-mawt hai. Mawt ko yaad karo. To kisi ne ka, kaise hum mawt ko yaad karay? Mawt ko yaad karay? Hayat ko hum kya bhi kya yaad karayenge? Amir al-Mumini ne farmaya, zikr al-mawt mein hi hayati hai. Kyunke insan jab zikr al-mawt karayega, to apne aap wo dharayega, kabr ki taraf jayega, Darega, to wo apne aap ko purify karega, tazkiya nafs karega. Jab tazkiya nafs karega, tab hayati milti hai insaan ko. Warna insaan, insaan ki hayati nahi kehlai jati. Agar insaan tazkiya nafs na kare. Lehaza hayati us wakt milti hai, jab insaan tazkiya nafs kare. Isi liye Rasul Islam ke paas ek shaks aata hai, aur sawal karta hai, ke ya Rasul Allah, aap mujhe kuch afal se aashna kare, jahaan se us afal mujhe jannat ki taraf le jaye. To huzur ne farmaya, فقیروں کو کھلا جو تشنا ہے ان کو پانی پلا امر بالمعروف انجام دو نحین المنکر انجام دو اگر یہ چار کام انجام نہ دے سکو تو حضور فرماتے ہیں پھر تم تمہاری زبان کو کنٹرول کرو زبان کو کنٹرول کرو حضور فرماتے ہیں ہاں محترم سامین موت کو یاد کرے انسان کربلا والوں نے بھی موت کو یاد کیا एक छोटा सा शहीद तेरह साल के सिन में उनसे जब पूछा गया कि ए बेटा कासिम कौन पूछता है सैयद शहदा पूछता है किससे हजरत कासिम से कि ए मेरे लाल कासिम मौत तुम्हारी नजर में कैसी है तो हजरत कासिम ने फरमाया अहला मिनल असल असल से ज्यादा मीठी है मौत कौन कहता है ये कासिम कहता है आजादारो 
मुझे ज्यादा मसायब नहीं पढ़ना है लेकिन करबला वालों को याद करने में ही हयाती है हा जदारो उनके मिशन को हम याद करें कासिम सलाम के बारे में मिलता है कि हर शहीद जब घोड़े से गिरा तो फकत एक मरतबा कहा असलम अबा अब्दिल्ला अली अकबर जब गिरे तो फकत एक मरतबा कहा असलम अबता और न मोहम्मद गिरे तो कहा वाह अम्मा अदरिकनी आइए मदद के लिए अब्बास जब गिरे एक मरतबा कहा असलम या अबा अब्दुल्ला लेकिन कासिम जब गिरते हैं तो बार बार कासिम ने कहा वाह अम्मा द्रिकनी वाह अम्मा द्रिकनी वाह अम्मा द्रिकनी बार बार फिर साहिब मकातिल लिखते हैं कि आया आप जानते हैं कासिम क्यों बार बार कहते थे वाह अम्मा द्रिकनी जैसे जैसे कासिम के लाशे को पामाल किया जाता था जैसे जैसे इधर के घोड़े उधर जाते थे उधर के घोड़े इधर जाते थे बस कासिम की रूह अपने बदन पे अभी बाकी थी बस क्योंकि लाशा पामाल होता जाता था कासिम चीखते जाते थे चचा जान आइए मदद के लिए चचा जान आइए मदद के लिए हमीद इब्ने मुस्लिम कहते हैं कि एक मर्तबा गुबार उभर आया मैंने कुछ नहीं देखा जब गुबार उठा सैयद ने कासिम के लाशे में पाया कासिम के लाशे को पाया सैयद शोहद सैयद शोहदा वहां पे पहुंच गए सैयद शोहदा ने अपने रुखसार को कासिम के रुखसार पर रखकर एक जुमला कहा ए बेटा मुझे माफ करो बेटा ए मेरा भतीजा बार बार तुमने बुलाया लेकिन तुम्हारा चचा ना आ सका तुमने बार बार बुलाया वाह अम्मा अदरिकनी लेकिन तुम्हारा चचा न पहुंच सका الذين